you have some dope samples and drum sounds that you want to import into GarageBand iOS, but you don't know how to do it. It's all good. I'm going to help you do that in this video. Let's go. What's up, people? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my latest content. Um, and hit that bell icon so you know like when the content is actually dropping. So let's talk about sampling and using samples in GarageBand iOS. Yes, that's the thing. You can do it and it's pretty easy. I'm going to show you, give you a tutorial on exactly how to do it in GarageBand iOS using my iPad over here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Like this video is not going to, it's not going to be a long one at all. So let's go. Okay, so once you open up a new session in GarageBand on iOS, you'll see this screen here. And what you wanna do is just scroll over to keyboard. Underneath, you'll see where it says sampler. Click on that. And that opens up the sampler. The sample we have is bark for whatever reason. But I don't have a mic plugged into this interface. But if I did, I could even record like a vocal sample into this sampler. Or if I didn't have an interface connected, um, I could just record straight into the iPad mic, which is pretty cool too. But for this tutorial, we're gonna import um, some drum one shots from my Urban Drum sound pack. Um, and yeah, cause I like I like my drums better. So we're gonna click on where it says bark. This is where you open up the sample library and we wanna hit import. So uh, once we get to import, I'm gonna go browse items from the files app. This is where my drums are. Depending on wherever you save your files, this is you know how you'll just go through that browser and find them. Um, and let's import some sounds. So I'm gonna, let's see, let's use this kick three. And then it'll take a couple seconds and then you'll see it load here. There it is. And then you can click it to kind of preview it, see what it sounds like. Um, so I'm gonna, let's bring in a snare. Uh, so let's see, see what this snare sounds like. Wait for it to load, there it is. Okay, cool. So now this blue import icon to the right, we wanna select that to bring that in there go back to import and then bring in that snare. Do the same thing for that. Now I have my kick and a snare, right? So uh, for this track, I'm just gonna do the kick and then I'll hit done. You can see here, you can adjust, you know, the attack exactly where, where you want that to start hitting. So if there's some extra space, you can trim that off. You can even, shorten it whatever you want to do chop it up however you want um, but I'm gonna leave it like it was I kind of take that extra space out um, and then boom now let's record some kick Right, we'll do a little quantize to make sure we on beat. All right. I feel like the beat is kind of off, but we're gonna rock with it. It's all good, it's just a tutorial. Um, so one thing I did notice in the GarageBand sampler is that if you don't, have this sustain cut on it's going to cut off once you release your finger off of the key so if you hold it it'll finish the sample but to prevent that and it it really really plays a role like if you have something you know heavy on the reverb or something like that um, and you can hear it just abruptly cut off so if you want to avoid that click here where it says sustain and then drag it to the right to lock the sustain and then what happens is when you play it, it'll just finish ringing out on its own. So let's try and record that over. All right 
minimize that. Let's just do one eight. I don't think it needs to be sixteen. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna duplicate this track um, because it already has a sampler in it. Now all I have to do is change this kick to the snare that I wanna use and hit done. See how it cuts off? Like if I lift up too early, it'll cut it off. If I hold it, it'll ring out. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this sustain here. So I don't really have to worry about it. Let's drag this up a little bit. Okay, cool. And then we'll record the snare. And then that's it. We'll do the same thing, quantize it. Boom, then you got your snare. So, um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, another cool thing about, you know, just this being a sampler is that you can pick what pitch you want your kick or your snare to be, and it's just automatically routed through the keys. So you don't really have to manually do that. It just automatically does it, um, for the keys, which is really, really cool. It'll do the same thing for, um, an 808. So maybe let's duplicate. Let's duplicate this track. Um, I think you can use the logic. Yeah, if you want to duplicate, you can use Command D to quickly duplicate something. Um, so let's import. Let's see if we can import like an 808. Um, I think I had one. Okay, so I had a, a one from 808 Warfare. Um, so let's just import that. And yeah. So it, it automatically tunes your 808, so you don't have to worry about that. The sustain thing on the 808s doesn't work as good. Um, let's see if it'll let me. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but you have that option available. Um, so yeah, that's how you import your custom samples, one shots, whatever you want into GarageBand iOS. Um, super simple process, it's not hard at all, and it gives you that flexibility to use some of your custom sounds in GarageBand, which is definitely a pro, especially for a free DAW on, you know, on iOS. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Question of the day. Um, what are you currently using in GarageBand? Are you using any third-party plugins, loops, samples? Let me know in the comments. And also, a link will be in the description to my Urban Drum sound pack if you want to grab that. Just make sure you use the discount code that's in the description as well. And yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.